Hello, everybody. Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest. Not reacting to a Raptors game today, but the Pacers and the Cavs. Game seven, the Cavaliers win 105 to 101 against the Indiana Pacers. The Toronto Raptors are officially playing the Cleveland Cavaliers in the second round. Yeah, but we'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to start mm -hmm. with an in depth analysis of just this game, this series, our take on the mainstream mm -hmm. media, specifically LeBron James, because it seems like. The Cavaliers are more LeBron than a collective of yeah. NBA individuals are, who play on a team. They are the Cleveland LeBrons. That's that should be the the they should change the team name to the LeBrons. Yeah, because he he single handedly won them the series when it seemed as if when he didn't drop forty points, they lost. Yeah, and had it was it was a need. And had he not had a strained leg or lower back this game. That took him out for the very start of the fourth quarter. He would have played all 48 yeah. minutes this Or game. cramps or whatever. What? Yeah, the, yeah, cramps. Was it a strain? No, it was cramps. Dehydration yeah. is what they said. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, he yep. would have played the entire 48 minutes. But what did you see? We, yep. we essentially both knew that this needed to happen. LeBron needed a 40-point game. Mm -hmm. If he's contained a 30 or less, he the, the, the Cavaliers would lose. And that that's that's yep. how they dropped their, their three games. Now, Old Depot... Valiant effort tonight. Still had 30 points, but they needed to contain LeBron, and they didn't do that. I mean, credit to him. Best player in the world. What do you think? Man, LeBron James has just been absolutely ridiculous this whole playoff series. His his average for this series, a game, you know, he's leading the Cavs in points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. He's averaging 32.7 points, 10.3 rebounds, 7.8 assists, and 1.2 blocks. It's he's basically doing everything in all statistical categories, and they it took a seven game series to beat the Indiana Pacers. Yeah, it's it's, it's shocking how bad his, his the rest of the yep. team is, and you know what? Yeah, look, lo, Kevin Love is just bad, and I I re, I didn't really pay much attention to Kevin Love, and there's certainly been criticisms of him all season long. But watching this game in particular in the first quarter, he was just trash. He was god-awful. And, of course, he had a couple threes, well, and he had a couple of points. But all in all, and this is a player that's it was an all-star, probably considered the second-best player mm -hmm. on the team, he's not good. He's definitely not. Well, well, Kevin Love has also missed a lot of the, the second half of the season pretty well because of a wrist injury. And then I, I believe he broke his a finger on his other hand. So... He's definitely playing hurt, so I think it's not just a product of him being trash, but also injuries might be taken into account. But yes, he's definitely been underperforming, especially in the playoffs since he's been back, only averaging 11 points, 10 rebounds. For a guy that's supposed to be the second option on a team, I agree. That's just, that's very bad. Yeah, but role reversal tonight, a player who's been virtually silent in the midst of his cheating scandal, whatever is happening in his love life, <laughs> Mr. Canadian Tristan Thompson has been virtually negligible in this playoff series yep. and he yep. had an awakening tonight he was really i would say that he's mm -hmm. the second reason that the cavaliers lost without his performance mm -hmm. i mean it, they only the cavaliers only won by four right yep and he was he shot almost 100 yep. from the field had a bunch of offensive rebounds what, do you think tristan thompson be a factor moving forward or is he going to regress back to nothing well you have to take sample size right he's just been atrocious all year and Personally, I want to like the guy. He's Canadian, seems like a decent fellow, but with all the off-the-court stuff, you know, whatever, leaving his pregnant wife, what, all that stuff, how he's been playing, he's just, there's too much going on with Tristan Thompson. I don't think he can consistently be productive. And as much as I want to like the guy, I I really don't see him perf keeping up high-level performance against for the rest of the playoffs. No, that's I, I, and I would agree with you there, and I'd I'd question mm -hmm. or I would yeah. or I would challenge other people to really argue that statement there. He's, I don't know, he hasn't been consistent, and he's got to prove himself. But yeah. there was two main stories well, of this game. Or do you want to say something first? Yeah, just to fin yeah, just to finish on Tristan Thompson, he he has had a history of being a great player playing with LeBron, but he's gotten that off just being a complete dog, hustling, getting every single offensive rebound. Because he's an undersized center, or even an undersized power forward. He's just a very thick man that goes after the ball 24-7. But he, he's just not have, he hasn't been engaged this whole season. And it, whether it's the Kardashian curse, all the off-the-court stuff, that he, his best skill has been totally taken out of him. So True. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the last thing I yeah, want to say. Yeah, if you about make your career off the of hustle, just... you got to keep up the hustle. But there was two yep. main stories yep. of this game, and that's really one: the officiating, whether you hate it or you love it, and then two: LeBron James. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 
I'm not sure what the audience for this video is, and if you're a non-Raptors Digest fan traditionally and you're tuning in, if you made it this far, I'd like to know, are you Team Ol- Oladipo or are you Team LeBron? It's a very passionate fan mm-hmm. base for the haters and the lovers of LeBron. Before we start, what are yeah. you, Ben? Just on this game alone. Did, did you want LeBron I, to win I was this definitely one? Cheering. I was definitely cheering for Oladipo. Yeah. I, I really li- I'm not a LeBron James hater at all. I'm... I really like the guy, except when he plays the Toronto Raptors, but I didn't want him to play the Toronto Raptors, and I really like what Victor Oladipo's done all season. You got to cheer for the underdog. So I was Team Oladipo, but I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a LeBron hater by any stretch. Yeah. Now it brings, what about you, Riker? It brings into question, it? you know what, I try to stay impartial, and this is sort of what I was thinking yeah. when I was watching the game, that one, he obviously is the best player in the world, and we haven't been yeah. graced to be alive long enough to be in the Jordan era as they are in his prime to be mm-hmm. really avid watchers of the NBA. So we can't really do a one-on-one yeah. comparison. But you're watching LeBron thinking, yeah. man, this guy is just miles ahead of everybody. But with that, yeah. and he was hitting shots from everywhere, there were some flaws in this game that I was picking out. And it sort of bleeds into the officiating category. But I want calls. I don't care if they're bad calls, but I want calls to be consistent. And there's certain things yeah, about exactly. LeBron's game that – that sort of that get under my skin one when he acts really tough but then he flops at really odd calls you know there was a push <laughs> off with Boyan Bogdanovich or uh or Lance Stevenson sorry no it was both of them push on yep. Boyan Bogdanovich and he clearly flopped there was uh he got hit in the head in the first quarter by Lance Stevenson clearly embellished that and spent about five six minutes rubbing his head as if he got you know punched in the face <laughs> You know, he travels. No, it's the hairline. It's the <laughs> yeah. There's no protection. Got to make of sure the hair. the hair follicles or whatever, uh, whatever they're promoting on NBA TV Canada in 2014. Make sure that stuff isn't taken out. No, it's totally it's totally <laughs> true. But um, I mean, the very first point that he got uh, in the first possession was he did a euro but took four steps, and then they ended up calling. They didn't call yeah. that as a travel, but they called two travels in the mm-hmm. game on the Pacers. It's just he's gotten to a level where. And this is the reason I think that there's so many haters and, you know, there's such a strong opinion about LeBron. You mm-hmm. either hate him or you don't. Yep. It's because if you're a fan yep. of LeBron, obviously he's so good that, you know, it's him or die. All right. If you're not, yep. people like cheering for the underdog. And he does things that I'm sure mm-hmm. lots of other players do. But, you know, because there's such a, a microscope on him, you know, it becomes accent- accentuated. And that's, that's sort mm-hmm. of what I found, too, that there's a lot of things that sort of slip. And I, I don't know if it's because of just poor officiating or if they protect lebron i'm not sure like what are your takes on that well he definitely gets the benefit of the doubt on a lot of calls and it, that was most blatant uh, in game five or, or game six sorry when he had the goaltending when the game he hit the game winner game five sorry i'm messing up my game numbers but when he had the goaltending <laughs> on Oladipo, depot it was blatantly goaltending and he he just gets the benefit of the doubt on those one-on-one calls as teams seem to get the every offensive foul called because it's not that the fouls are uneven when he put when and not the Warriors but like a team like the Pacers the Raptors are playing against LeBron but whenever those teams go on a run they start getting the momentum of the game it seems as if as if every possession there's an offensive foul called or you know something that just gets the team out of the flow of the game and then the fouls on the other side get called those ticky tack, the ones that don't matter, reach ins when no one has the ball. So, I think the timing of the calls is something that's very infuriating watching against LeBron James. But I don't know that's my biggest gripe. Yeah, no, with LeBron, I agree. And, LeBron led team. And some would argue this, and I certainly encourage the debate to open up in the comments section whether you think that there is mm-hmm. questionable calls co- called towards LeBron. I think certainly he deserves it at this point, as much as you know, yep. unfairness can be deserved, but um, he's a player mm-hmm. that plays, he was ready to log 48 minutes this game. He's put the team on his back. He gets better every season. He's a true competitor. Um, he's he, he's out there. He's definitely win. earned the benefit of the doubt. hundred yeah, percent. He gets those, but what I he want, gets those. And those calls are the ones that are most infuriating but, and most yeah. just energy killing. No, I totally agree. But what I want to ask you is mm-hmm. what did you think about the officiating as a whole this game? As I, as I said, it's, it's never that it's one-sided. It's just that the calls LeBron gets are the ones that are the momentum builders. So you think right? overall the, the Pacers the were one... short at this game? Yes, but that's something to come to expect when you're playing against an NBA legend. Okay. See, I don't know. So, I, I felt that the calls, yeah. 
in the first quarter were particularly bad, but I think for the rest of the game, mm-hmm. except for a technical foul call on uh, Collison, I thought that that was bogus, um, and that flagrant yeah. on Lance Stevenson. But otherwise, I felt that the mm-hmm. the calls generally generally leveled out. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I never. I always hate blaming games on referees, and that's something that I I think we both concur that referees never win or lose games. But I think with LeBron James led teams, they definitely shift momentum. Yeah, that's possible. But the man had a 44 point mm-hmm. game. I think he he yeah. took this game. There was no yeah. way that the Pacers were winning when LeBron goes into LeBron game seven mode. Um, yeah, 100%. But should we do a a segment piece and just apply it to the Cavs, or should we just jump straight into what the Raptors Cavaliers matchup might look like briefly? Uh, I don't know. It it would be odd giving LeBron James a to go play of the day. It would it would hurt my soul, especially with how how much anger I'm gonna have for him coming up in the series if he drops a 44 point game. So we're gonna. I think we should hold right. back on giving him a de goat player and OGs. Yep, that's exclusive Raptors. But Riker, after seeing what the Cavs have done in the first round and what they've done all season, how how are you feeling about this upcoming series? Are you scared or excited or do you, you know? Yeah, it's tough to say. It's tough to say, and I think that LeBron is gonna have. A handful of 40 point games that they'll win against the Mm -hmm. raptor that they'll win against the raptors i'm hoping not four to be honest with you and i'd like to be an impartial podcast host but uh obviously i'm biased towards the raptors but to be pragmatic Mm -hmm. um i think it'll be really tough it'll be really tough to beat the the cleveland cavaliers and i think that the raptors are obviously a better team than the pacers so there should be a certain sense of confidence that uh, the Raptors do have a fighting chance to beat this team that was just brought to Game 7. But at the same time, we have to balance in the fact that it was a tough series against the Wizards, which really shouldn't have been as difficult. And it's because of the regression to ISO ball in Game 4 and 5. Now, they shook mm-hmm. that, or sorry, uh, 3 and 4, but they shook that for the last two yep. games. I think if both teams are playing at the peak, and by both teams I mean if Raptors versus LeBron <laughs> are playing at peak yep. basketball, it'll be an exciting series. Um yeah, I, I don't know who has the edge, though, to be honest with you, because the defense at the small forward position against LeBron, I think, is the weakest point. And I'd like to say OG is going to mm-hmm. lock him down, but I, but I'm, I don't know. What what do you think? Well, I I know in past conversations that we've had, I'm a bit higher on the Raptors playing against the Cavs than you. I think the Raptors will definitely take the series. It's and confident. yeah, I'm because I don't see us losing every game on the road. I don't know how the Cavs will be just at home. The Rap- Toronto Raptors are a ridiculous home team. So if we start off the series, I think it's very reasonable for us to start the series 2-0. And the fact that he doesn't have a Kyrie anymore. It's just LeBron with that playoff experience. If they go down 2-0 to start the series, I don't know how guys like uh, Jordan Clarkson or Rodney Hood or any of these guys are going to react. Right? Obviously, LeBron will have his big games, but... The Cavs' depth, right? Everyone said at the trade deadline that they're they're so much deeper. All these random guys are gonna save the series. None of them are producing. Kyle Korver, kinda, but he's just a spot up shooter, really, especially at his age. Even Kevin Love isn't giving much, right? Like, obviously LeBron is the best player in the series, but the Raptors from you know two through fifteen dominates Cleveland. It's it's not even close. And I think you'd agree with that. Yeah. I mean, if I had two takeaways, so, if I'm trying to game plan against the Cavaliers and I had two takeaways, mm-hmm. one, I would double, trip, I would, double is given. I would triple, quadruple, <laughs> sanctuple LeBron James, and I'd let Kyle Korver shoot every single three-pointer of the game and beat the series, beat the Raptors on three-point shooting alone. I don't know. I would, I would let that happen yeah. before I'd let LeBron do post-up, before I'd let him go but see, that's, 10 for 10. That's what he wants, though. That's what LeBron wants. No, he doesn't. LeBron wants to score. He he, he wants to pass. He's a pass first player. Uh, I don't know. The team's on his back. He's in. He's in. Let me score and let me win this game mode. I definitely agree. He would think mm-hmm. the burden would be less, but I, I say, do whatever it takes to slow down LeBron. Because if he gets forty mm-hmm. points or more, they're losing the game. And the second thing I would say yep. is, you have finally a ten a ten man rotation, um, two 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 shifts with Fred VanVleet back, right? Mm-hmm. And you can yep. dip yourself into the pool of Bebe and Norm, even though nobody believes in them anymore. But I think you play them and tell them to ride 
as hard as you can. Hockey shifts, two minute shifts of just intensity, just run the fast break and just tire and just wear down the Cavaliers team because yep, they exactly. do not want to play their bench. That's the point that I want to bring up. LeBron James said after the series, right after this game seven, man, I'm tired. I just want to go home. He's getting leg cramps from exhaustion. He's a human being. And if the Raptors can keep everyone fresh throughout the whole games, LeBron is going to wear himself out. And that's the one advantage the Raptors have over every team, and especially a team that's led by one person. So if they can just go at this, you know, this behemoth the whole game, try him trying to play one on five or, you know, one on trying to take in on everyone, then kick out to shooters, he's going to be exhausted. And we got to take advantage of that using the bench, using all these other players. And my only hope is that unlike past years, we don't get random guys. Thank goodness Channing Fry is gone. But we don't have any randoms who do nothing the whole year come in and decimate the Toronto Raptors. I don't want any of these random players coming in and start hitting threes. Yeah. That's that's my one fair. That's my biggest fair personally. Yeah. Because these role players random randomly have gigantic nights against the Raptors. Yep, but that's to be seen. Um mm-hmm. this this season. Yeah. All right, man, we're running 100%. a bit long. Maybe we'll wrap it up. We'll yeah, probably we'll, dump out a second pod if we want a series. Yeah, we're gonna have. We're definitely gonna have a series preview. This is more talking about the game with the Cavs, LeBron, a little bit on the series. But we'll have a full, you know, focused review on the game coming up soon. The next coming days. But I, I have confidence in the Raptors. Yep, I like it. It's not dumbfounded. It certainly comes from fact. So mm-hmm. for sure, can't wait. Well, let's know what you guys think about the this Pacers Cavs team are you happy with the matchup do you think this year is going to be different from past seasons just every all your thoughts let us know in the comments follow the Twitter follow the Instagram all that cool stuff you guys are the best for listening Riker any last words that's it thanks for listening